the red hot kitchen folks. Apologies if I look a bit dishevelled and sweaty. I'm a bit dishevelled and sweaty. But today I'm going to make some blackberry cider. Let's have a look at those ingredients. Here they are. Well it's blackberry cider. So I've got blackberries. I've actually got 350 grams of blackberries which my wife has been out and picked. I've got two kilos of apples, so these are apples, not apple juice from concentrate, apples and every single one is tiny and undersized. They're all windfall apples from my apple tree in my front garden, but they're actually quite sweet apples. Next to that, I've got a kilo of brewing sugar. I've currently got five litres of spring water, but I suspect I'll be adding up to another three or four litres of spring water. My yeast of choice today is Cross My Loof Crystal Weissen, which is my favourite yeast at the minute. It's so versatile and it's so fast as well. I'll be feeding that with a little bit of Young's yeast nutrient. And I'll be adding a little pectolase to hopefully cut down any pectin haze that the fruit may cause it. So yeah, blackberry and apple. I mean, it seems like such a logical combination and it's that time of year when these fruit are available. I've been making blackberry and apple crumbles and jams for years. In fact, I've had jam on the go all morning. So I just thought, why not make some cider? I've never made this flavour before and I don't know why. So that's what I'm going to do. And my fermentation vessel of choice today will be the Muntons wine fermenter. I'm hoping to make 10 litres or two gallons of cider. The first thing I'm going to do is to boil a little bit of water in this kettle and that is then going into this big deep pan, like Alan's deep bath but Stuart's deep pan. What I'm wanting to do is to steam my apples. Right I've got my big chopper out, I'm going to cut these in two. Quite small, but I'm leaving the pips in and everything else, it doesn't matter. And they're going into the pan. I'm not worried about anything that's got a bit of discoloration in it. It's getting steamed, so anything in there which is potentially problematic is going to get killed off anyway. So I'll start to chuck my apple bits into the water. And basically this process continues until they're all in there. I'll be back. So there they are, in the deep pan. Like I said, they're all windfall apples, but I'm a Yorkshireman and there's no way I are gonna waste them. Oh no. So with the apples goes the blackberries that my wife picked. I'm gonna pop a lid on top. Gas on. And I'll put that on low. And I want this to come to a gentle simmer and I want the steam to build up and the apple material will just break down. Yeah, there's the weather outside folks. It is 30 degrees, just approaching 31. So I've got two apple trees in my back garden, right at the back of the garden that you've just seen. I've got a big apple tree that makes cooking apples. They're not nice to eat, but they're great cookers and they're good in brews as well, but dry. In my front garden, I've got a red sweet apple tree and that's what you've seen in there, red and green apples, but they're nice. But they fall off quite easily and the birds have been pecking at them and they've been coming off. And it's getting towards the end of summer. This is currently August the 13th, I believe it is today. And you know what happens at this time of year? It reminds me of that Game of Thrones meme. You know the one with uh, Sean Bean where it shows him and it says like winter is coming. It's like apples are coming and I've been sort of reserving all my bits of kit now knowing that I'm going to have an influx of apples and I need to make stuff with it. And not just the apples, the blackberries are ready and there's other things been ready in the garden. The hops will be ready soon. So it is that time of year now where everything's going a bit crazy, you know, the harvest time. Interestingly, just mentioned Sean Bean, a fellow Yorkshireman. Have you ever thought about Sean Bean? S-E-A-N-B-E-A-N. -E Why is it Sean Bean? and not Sean Bourne or Seen Bean. I've always wondered that. Okay, as you'll observe, I've spot pan lids because that's the one I should have been using on that pan. This one is actually in here and that is the remnants of the blackberry and apple jam I made this morning. There's a bit of jam in the bottom of the pan which I've loosened with some water and I'm actually gonna add that into this brew because all it contains is apples, blackberries and sugar. And here's the jam I made this morning with a backdrop of some more apples 
and a melon. The melon was from Asta. Right, 20 minutes later, let's have a look. Steamy. There's an intense smell of apple and blackberry coming out of there. Has it softened much yet? Mm, not enough. No, I'm going to leave this a bit longer. Right, a further 10 minutes in. Oh yes, mush mush time now. This is definitely going to go, yeah. I can turn the heat off at this point. So I've got a bit of work to do with this to break this down. I'll come back to you in a bit. Okay, there's my mushed apple and blackberry. It's now time to ladle it into this sieve and push it through the sieve into that wok, which has got the remnants of my blackberry and apple jam in. So the first thing to do is literally just to get that ladled in and it'll start to drip through and that's great, that's what I want. I get three ladles in there. And then this is something that you really, really don't want to do on a day when it's 30 degrees, trust me. Because what I've got to do now is to work this through the sieve and this takes a bit of elbow grease. So if you didn't think I was sweating enough before, I'll be sweating afterwards. If you've ever got too many apples and you can't store them and you wanted to make cider, then breaking them down like this makes them easier to get in the fridge or the freezer. Because they're basically in a mushy liquid form and then you can use them when you need them. I'm only having a shower when I've done this. So under the sieve, I need to get all that scraped off. So that's now what is in the wok and that's the dry stuff which I don't need. This will be going to compost, that will be making cider. Okay I've got to keep doing this until it's all done. It's going to take a little while. There's no point in you watching me do it all. So I'll come back to you in a little bit. See you then. So that is the upshot of my sieving endeavours. A lot of very fruity material to make cider with and a bit of dry stuff for compost. And I'm absolutely jiggered. Seen Bean couldn't have done that any better. So I've washed my big pan out and now as carefully as possible I need to try and get this blob back into there. And I'm going to give it a good old scrape with the wooden spoon, get all the bits off the edge. I want all that flavour out of there. That'll do. So there's my big pan of mush. Now this is actually what I'd call a base. Um, this is an apple and blackberry base. An apple base would be made in exactly the same way but just with apples. So as I mentioned before the base is handy if you're wanting to store your fruit but you haven't got the capacity to store a large amount of it. You can mush it down like this, you can get it into um, ice cream tubs or whatever, shove it in the freezer. Now this base could be used for anything. If I wanted to make wine I would add the same weight of sugar as what I did to fruit initially. For cider I usually add about 50% of the sugar for that purpose. For jam I would add the same amount of sugar as the weight of fruit as well. So I need to add the sugar but before I can do that I need to add some spring water. So this is five litres. I'll see how much I want to put in as I'm doing it. I'm making it up as I go along. Do you know what? I'm just going to stick it all in. Messy. So there's my five litres now of the apple and blackberry base with water. At this point there is no extra sugar, only the natural sugars that come with it. But that's now going to change as I'm going to add a kilo of brewing sugar. So this is dextrose monohydrate brewing sugar. It breaks down nice and easily and it doesn't usually leave off flavours. Sometimes caster sugar can leave off flavours. There'll be lots of people want to argue with me and say it never does, but believe you me, I've done it and I know. So once again, I've got my big pan on the ring and once again, I'm going to put the gas on and the heat on. And I'm going to put that at a medium heat. I want this 
to come to the boil and then I'm going to turn it off and that's it and then I'm going to leave it to go cool before proceeding. So the lid goes on, I'll come back to you when this is simmering and then that'll be it for a while. Okay half an hour later, right I think we can say that's boiling, heat off. Okay I need to get the lid completely off of this now, it's still making a noise but the heat is now off. I'm going to add to this now two very generous decent heaped dessert spoonfuls of pectolase. I'm going to move the pan onto a cold ring and I'm going to put this filter on top. I want the pan to cool down because I can't start making the cider until this is down to room temperature. And that's because I don't want to damage my plastic fermenter. So we'll either carry on with this brew this evening or if I can't be bothered because of the heat tomorrow. So I'll catch you either this evening or tomorrow. Hey folks, it's the next day, brew day two. Let's have a look at that cider must. So here it is. It's been in here for 20 hours. Uh, and you can already see that the sediment has sank to the bottom and it's clearer on top. This is going to be very sedimenty, it'll be very sediment heavy and will require racking. In terms of the temperature, I would say that that is more or less room temperature now. I wouldn't describe it as being warm anymore. So now I need to get this out of there and into here along with water and yeast. Okay, so my fermenter is the Muntins wine fermenter. It's got everything integrated, tap. Airlock is integrated into the top. I'll put it together and show you as I do it. It's really good. It holds just over 10 litres. You can get two Demijohns uh, in the equivalent of this. Um, and I'm going to do the initial first fermentation in this before racking into Demijohns from this vessel. I'm going to begin by adding a little bit of Tesco spring water. I'll just protect the bottom of the vessel with some water before adding the must in. So there's about two and a half litres gone in there. I'm going to begin by initially doing a bit of ladling because it's a big heavy pan and I'm going to just throw it everywhere if I don't. So this is going to take a little while but at least it will be well mixed with the water. So I'll come back to you in about five minutes when I'm ready for the big pour. Okay, I think I'm confident enough for the big pour now, I hope. Let's just hope it doesn't go everywhere. Really sedimenty. Good stuff. Right, I'm just going to rinse this out a little bit with some spring water. Just because there's, you know, there's fruit and goodness in there and sugar. Yorkshiremen don't waste out. Right, that's going to go in. And I'm just going to give it a tiny bit more spring water. That'll do. Now this will build a fair size Krausen. I'm hoping I haven't overfilled it to the point where the Krausen is going to come flooding through the airlock because it will be a bit messy. But my experience of this fermenter is because it's quite wide, the Krausen usually spreads quite nicely. So fingers crossed, that's what I'm hoping for. If it happens in my favour, great stuff. And if I make a mess, well, I've learned my lesson, haven't I? Anyway, there's about two litres of spring water left in there for the next brew, which will be going on tomorrow. So before I go any further, I'm going to give it a stir with my ladle and a mix around because I want a consistent liquid for the original gravity reading. I've cleaned my hydrometer, so I'm just going to dunk it straight in there. And I'm starting off on an original gravity of 1.044, 1044. So I'm hoping to get something which is around about 5% or slightly over or thereabouts. I shouldn't really need to add yeast nutrient into a brew like this because it's packed with nutrient, but I'm going to do anyway, just for consistency's sake. I usually do, and it usually works. So I've got a dessert spoon here and I'll put a nice rounded dessert spoonful of yeast nutrient in there. The yeast shall have no complaints. 
So here's my uh, yeast. It's my Crystal Weissen yeast from Cross My Loof. I've been using this inside as of recent. I stopped using EC1118 for a while, just thought I'd variate it around. I went on to D47. I've been using this and you know what? It ferments so quickly, it's unbelievable. And it leaves a decent flavour. So I'm quite enjoying using this at the minute. It also bakes good bread. So I'm going to put out of this sachet, I'll probably put round about half the sachet in there. Yeah, that'll do. So the yeast is floating on top. I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to let it settle and do its own thing. So I'm going to start to put the fermenter together now, beginning with the trap that goes in the top. This is to sort of prevent any big bits of matter coming and uh, getting inside what is the airlock. So this goes in first. And it just sits there nicely. Following that goes the lid with integrated airlock and that's just got to be screwed into place ensuring that you are not cross-threaded. It's pretty good actually. I've only got one of these vessels for fermenting in but I think I need to get some more because when you're dealing with bigger batches than a demijohn you know you need something that's a good fermenter like this. I don't always want to do great big you know 25 litre brews because I don't drink that much. So it's good to have something which is sort of in between, which is why I like the Muntins fermenter. So I'm going to add a little bit of water into the airlock until it starts to dribble out. There we go, it's dribbling out now, so I've filled that up as much as I need to. This then presses down on top, in place, and this finally screws into place on top of the fermenter holding everything down and in place and that is done. So I'm just going to label up. Okay so this is now done. As you can see I've labelled it up. I've labelled it as brew day two as being today that it's gone in there because it is the second day of the brew altogether. Um, I'm going to label this from now on in terms of the film in terms of brew day rather than one day later two day later etc so you can see how long the brew takes accurately and easier. So I'm going to come back to you with a fermentation update once I see something happening in that airlock. And yes, I am going to cover it up so the direct sunlight isn't on this. Okay, catch you in a bit. Okay, so it's four hours later. And look at that. We have Krausen and fermentation has begun. Now the crazy stage is probably going to be in two or three days time. So watch this space. Early morning of brew day three. It turns out I was wrong. Okay, all cleaned and hopefully, fingers crossed, sorted. Brew day four and it seems to be behaving itself fermentation wise that this has been such a strong fermenter I'm predicting that this might actually finish within a week Hey from the kitchen folks it's been ever such a busy brewing and cooking day today but now it's time to look at that blackberry cider okay so this is now brew day 11 and this is what it looks like. It has cleared quite a lot on top. Fermentation ended about four or five days ago or thereabouts. And it's done nothing since apart from settle with this massive, massive amount of trub, far too much trub in the bottom um, of the fermentation vessel. So what I'm gonna to do today is rack off the clean gallon up there that we can see into this demijohn. And then I'm going to investigate if this actually is all trub or if it's just stuck around the edge because I suspect that a lot of this is stuck around the edge and the trub actually isn't that high up. So I'm just going to undo the airlock on top and take the filter out. It smells very dry cidery. Right, so I'm precariously holding the siphoning tube in there. I can't tell how far down it's gone. I'm just going to have to hope for the best. And I think it's gone down too far looking at that because that's looking like trub. Let's lift it. There it is, I can see it now. Right, I was in the trub. 
so it does look like in fact but there is a ton of trouble in this not what I wanted at all I thought it would be very sediment heavy just not that sediment heavy anyway I'm going to fill this damage on up I'll get back to you when it's done okay so I've racked and labeled one damage on now I've got enough to fill another damage on there but how much of that is actually going to be sediment I don't know so what I'm going to do is I'm going to siphon off the top bit and then I'm going to try and get the bottom bit out through the tap unless it clogs the tap once again what I don't want is a damage on full of sediment right I'll come back to you in a bit Okay, let's see what happens when I do the tap. This is not great in terms of oxidising, incidentally. Yeah, this is thick. It's like a slush puppy coming out of there. I'll fill the jug up and get back to you. Okay, the tap has just completely clogged, so I'm just going to turn that off. That's going to have to be taken apart and cleaned now. Right, the sediment heavy stuff that I've got in here, I'm going to run it through a coffee filter and a funnel and see if that removes any other rubbish out of it. I'm still going to end up with sediment heavy cider in there. But if I can remove some of it then that's better. I'll come back to you in a bit. Right, that's more or less the first lot through. I think I might have to try another tactic. Right, let's just pour directly and see what happens. Again, it's going to take a while. I'll be back. Right, this is what I've ended up with. So that was the first damage on that you saw me fill in. That is going to clear okay, I think. It's already got a good layer of sediment in the bottom, and I'm just going to leave that. I'm not adding anything to it. It might bubble very slightly, but it's done. This one, on the other hand, I'm at, that, I'm at a point now where do I decide to keep this, or do I run it through the still, which would just be easier? However, it is going to make some nice cider. It is going to be very sedimenty. I'm probably going to end up with sediment to there, but I need to top it up with something. So I think the easy answer is to top it up with some apple juice from Concentrate. So before I can do that, I need to take an interim gravity reading. The gravity at this point is 0 0.996 which is excellent, it's really low, but I'm going to need to dilute that. Okay, so to work out the alcohol by volume at this stage, I take the original gravity, which is 1.044. I deduct from that the gravity reading that I've just taken. That's the final gravity for this one, but for this one, that is the interim gravity. So that is 0 0.996, which equals 0.048. I then multiply that figure by 131.25, and that equals 6.3%. So this, at this point, is 6.3%. So is this. However, I'm going to dilute that now by adding some apple juice. So I've got one litre of apple juice from Concentrate here. Now I'm going to guess... This demijohn holds 4.45 litres. Let's just say four and a half litres for argument's sake. I'm going to guess there's about three litres there. Uh, let's see how far this fills it up. So this will dilute the alcohol, but it will kickstart fermentation because this carton of apple juice contains sugars. Now, not a lot of sugars, but certainly enough to make up for the dilution. So yeah, so I reckon if, I'm just going to say that there were three litres in there and there's now four litres in there. So I need to then work out how much I've diluted it by. Okay, the bit that nobody likes, the maths. So I've just put this together in a couple of PowerPoint slides to go through with you. So the cider interim alcohol by volume was the original gravity minus the interim gravity. Uh, and that is 6.3%. I've already worked that out with you. Now I diluted this, so there was already three litres of cider in the demijohn, and I diluted it by adding one litre of apple juice. One equals 
33% of 3 or 33.333, but we'll just say 33% of 3. And to work that out, it's 1 divided by 3 times 100. The interim ABV of 6.3% needs reducing by 33% to take account of the dilution. And that figure is 2.08. And to work that out, um, I take the 33% divided by 100 and multiply it by the 6.3%. And that tells me that I've diluted it by taking 2% off it. That means the restarting diluted alcohol by volume for this cider is now 4.22%. 6.3 minus 2.08 equals 4.22%. Hope you followed that. I know nobody likes it. So now I've worked out that bit of maths with you. I now need to take the gravity as this is now going to restart fermenting. So I'll take a restarting gravity now and the restarting gravity minus the final gravity times 1 through 1.25 will give us another alcohol percentage. I'll add that to the 4.08 that we've just worked out. That will give me the final ABV for this brew. And actually, it won't be that much different to the other one, but I'm just trying to be precise. Right, so the restarting gravity for this, so this was 0 0.996 before I added the litre of apple juice. And the restarting gravity for this is one. 0 0.010 1, 0, 10, 10. Okay, my key observation of this going forward is I'm not happy with how much headspace there is still. I'm not adding any more liquid to it. What I'm going to do is add some glass beads. And these are aquarium beads, which are safe to use with food. Uh, and I'm going to just sanitise these and then pop them in to fill it up. And this is the fermenter I was using before. It's now full of sanitised liquid. I'll borrow some out of that. It'll go back in afterwards. I'll just leave them for five minutes. Okay, I'm going to consider my beads sanitised now. Here they are. I'm just going to plop them in. And it will increase the level of the liquid. And it means that that headspace has gone. I've seen people do this in winemaking groups on Facebook. I've never done it before. But I knew that eventually something like this would happen. So I ordered them online and now I'm using them. There we go. This is now full. Beads in the bottom. I'm happy enough with that. So hopefully I'll be bottling these in a couple of weeks or so. I'll get back to you when that happens. Until then, see you later folks. And just an update a few hours later. The blackberry cider, where I added the extra apple juice, is now racing through fermentation again. All good here. Good afternoon from the kitchen, folks. It's a blackberry cider update. Today I'm going to bottle. It's not quite in the condition I'd like it to be, but I'm still going to go ahead and do it. It's brew day 38, and it's been in the demijohns long enough. And to be quite frank, I need them because I'm running out of kit. Let's have a look at it. So you can see, even after all this time after being racked, it's still not clear. The one next to it is a bit clearer, but this is the one where I had to add the extra apple juice uh, and play around with it. This one is as it was. I'm not massively happy at bottling it at that clarity. It does mean I'll have a slightly cloudy cider. It might also mean that I end up with some sediment in the bottles, which is not ideal, but you know, it's not the end of the world either. The key choice that I've got is, do I go for it cloudy and sparkling, or do I put finings in and risk it not being sparkling? So I'm gonna go for slightly cloudy and hopefully sparkling. Just to point out that these demijohns have only just been put up here, it's not been fermenting in the sun. I'm just removing the bung. And then the siphoning tube goes in. I'm holding it in place with this rather useful clip and the bottom of the tube is just there. It's above the sediment line and I'm not going to tinker with that. I'm going to leave it where it is. Now, instead of going straight into the bottle, I'm going to go into this plastic vessel first, which has been sanitised. It's just a water bottle. So it looks nice in the tube. It's not picking up too much sediment. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way is simply because it is a little bit cloudy. So what I'm going to do is individually bottle it from the bottle through another filter just to try and take out 
any bits of sediment that I can. So it has picked up a little bit of sediment in there unfortunately but I am going to use another filter at the bottling stage. Now as for this demi on just here what I'm actually going to do with this is just use a little bit of it to finish topping up my six bottle. I've got six bottles cleaned and sanitized. I'll probably get five and a half out of that. I'm going to use this one to top the last bottle up and then whatever's left in there, plus the sedimenty stuff that's left in the bottom of that demijohn, is going to go into my air still and I'm going to make some blackberry and apple brandy from it. So it's all happening. I'll get back to you shortly when this is emptied. Okay, so carrying on, I'm going to add a small amount of caster sugar into each bottle. That's the equivalent of about one and a half teaspoonfuls. And the caster sugar is what's known as priming sugar. And that will react with the yeast which is left in suspension in here, which will give this a sparkle. So moving forward, this is my setup. This is my cloudy blackberry cider. And I've now got a coffee filter with a paper in there and a funnel going into the bottle. It's going to be a slow job, which is why I've got it into here first, because if I'd left it in the demijohn um, with the bung out, it would have basically uh, oxidized. So this is helping to keep this preserved as best as possible. Now I'm doing this steadily and slowly. It's going to take a while. Each bottle's probably going to take 10, 15 minutes. So I'm just going to fill this up and then the filter paper will gradually slow down as microscopic bits of sediment begin to fill it up. When that happens, I'll let the filter paper empty and I'll put a new paper in. So at all points I'm keeping the lid back on that bottle. I don't want it to oxidise and this is what we've got happening. So when my first bottle's full, I'll get back to you with the bunging and the caging just to demonstrate how that works. Catch you in a minute. Okay, that's the first bottle done. You can see a little bit of clarity at the, towards the top and I think it will clear up a little bit more, but I also suspect that this one might stay fairly cloudy. Anyway, I've had my bungs, which are plastic, in very hot water to make them malleable. I'm gonna push this one in. Okay, even making them malleable can sometimes be tough. It hurts. Cage goes on top of bung. It's pulled down over the bung tightly and twisted tightly to the bottle. And this keeps the bung in place because there will be a secondary fermentation take place in this bottle, which is what the priming sugar was put in there for. That fermentation is what causes the carbonation, the buildup of pressure. Without the cage, the bung just flies out. So that is the first bottle done. Actually, I'm gonna push that bit more that's better that's the first bottle done bunged and caged I've got to repeat this process now for another five bottles you don't want to watch that I'll come back to you when they're all done so see you soon actually just while bottle number two is filtering in I thought I'd take the final gravity of this brew so we can work out what the alcohol by volume is and the final gravity for this brew is 0 0.994. Okay, so it's time to work out the final gravity for this brew. So it began with an original gravity of 1.044. I deduct from that the final gravity, which was 0 0.994. That equals a figure of 0 0.05. And then I multiply this by 131.25 which gives me a final alcohol by volume of, drumroll please, 6.56%, let's just say 6.6%, a nice result. So the ABV calculation for this one, taking into account the racking and the dilution, etc., has come out at 5.9%. This one, however, is going to go into my air still. So I'm just going to give these bottles a rinse because they're covered in sticky bits of residue because I want to label them next. So I'm just going to pour that into my still through a muslin cloth over a sieve just to get any bits out rather than have them burn on the side of it. The still's got a capacity of four litres 
and that's probably about how much of this there is because if you remember I had to put the glass beads in to make up the volume physical volume that is it's a bit pungent actually this one it smells a bit yeasty so you can see there that's the full line for four litres and that's all that's left in here I'm quite happy to sacrifice that I'm now going to switch on the still and that's a separate thing I've got a lot of cleaning to do but let's concentrate today on the cider because that's what this film's about it's time to sort out the labels okay I've got my labels made up in a very simple template I'm just going to print these out now on a Bluetooth printer Okay, it's time to get those bottles labelled up. Just nice to make them look nice and professional and also to know what you're drinking. Greetings from the living room folks. This is where my blackberry cider will condition for the next month. Here it is. It's up here on my shelves. This room is a nice and warm room. It's south facing connected to a conservatory. It is now getting autumnal, but the temperature in here will stay reasonably decent. Looking at my carbon monoxide alarm, which is next to my shelves, it's currently 24 in here. So that is pretty good. And of obviously having a wood burner, which I've currently got smouldering away down there. Is going to be a big help so these will condition up here for the next month and after that we'll have a tasting so i'll catch you in a month's time for the sampling see you then good evening from the kitchen folks it's my grand opening night for my blackberry cider this is brew day 70 and this has been in the bottle conditioning for one month now I can see that the bung has very slightly raised, so hopefully that means we've got carbonation. I won't know till I open it. Uh, it seems to have cleared quite nicely in the bottle. Um, if you can see in the neck, there is a little bit of sediment or lees, as you might call it, in the bottom, which is not ideal, so maybe I should have left it for longer in the demijohn. But hey ho, hopefully the lees have contributed to a, a good flavour rather than giving it an off one. I won't know till I open it and taste it. So. Shut up, Stuart, and get it open. Or as they say in Barnsley, get it open. The bung has raised very slightly. I've just removed the cage. What am I going to get? Am I going to get a pop? Yes! And I've got vapour. Yes, that's what we want. Right. Hopefully that means we've got a lovely sparkler. Oh, look at that bad boy. Yes, get in. Oh, I'm always happy when it does that. It's a big relief. Right, so first of all, let's just appreciate that sparkle. It smells lovely, it doesn't particularly smell of blackberry, it just smells quite cidery. Let's have a taste. I'd say it's a medium dry. It definitely tastes like cider. There's something there. If you'd asked me to blind guess what it was, there's absolutely no chance whatsoever I would have guessed it was blackberry from the taste. It tastes like some sort of fruit cider, but indeterminate as to what fruit it could be. It could be anything from raspberry to watermelon. There's definitely something there that complements the apple, but what you'll never know unless you knew. Anyway, it still tastes good and I'm still going to enjoy it. I consider it a success. So cheers, folks, and I'll catch you on the next brew or cooking film or whatever that may be. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk 
I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.